Well, guys, here I am, uh, Lake Pierce at the ranch with my famous windmill. I've been talking about the windmill quite a bit. If you go back through my, uh, through the videos there, and you search for windmill or search for beady, beady, B E A double T Y B, then you'll get all the all the videos. There's probably about six of them in there. And we've talked about the windmill itself, how it works, and uh, what I've done to restore it. It's over 100 years old. And, uh, and and go in the well and the pump. We talked about the pump, which is actually the part down in the water that uh, that that draws the water up. This part that you see above, which everybody calls the pump, which is really technically called the standard. But that's all about and, and about this particular very special one, which is a three-way has a lever on it, so you can either have water coming out of the spout, as I was just doing, or you can send water underground to the barn. Uh, and we, we talked about um, the pump jack, this uh, thing here, which will actually hook up to a motor or a tractor and pump water, even if the wind isn't isn't blowing. We talked about the diverter, the special device that hangs on the spout, which will uh, take the water to the cattle drop, even if the cattle drop is 15, 20, 30 feet away. We talked a lot of stuff about the windmill. Now, one thing that we have not talked about, which is very, very common in most windmills, is a device called the regulator. Yeah, regulator. If you're a scuba diver watching, uh, yeah, the regulator is the thing you put in your mouth. Anyway, regulator. Now, the regulator is, a, is one of those really interesting devices developed many, many years ago, 100 years ago, and, and to, to help, the, help the farmer, the rancher. And I've had a real difficulty getting details on a regulator. I've had, there's not too much technical information available. I found very little. I have a parts list, so the list of various parts in a BD regulator, but there's no details on how it works, on how to hook it up, how to service it, nothing at all. So I've been very largely going on my own, even speaking to windmill experts, I've had trouble getting information. But perhaps if you have windmills in your area, and if you share an interest in windmills, you may very well have seen a regulator, and you're very likely, as many people uh, do, uh, you you didn't don't even know what it was. You didn't even recognize it. I'm going to get you uh, if you'll take a, a little slide up the windmill leg here. Maybe step back a little bit. Watch the cat. And take a look up there, and you'll see the regulator. I don't know if you can see it from there. I want to come over here, maybe a bit, so you can see it from the side. The regulator is that round ratchet tooth device up there with the arm sticking out, and that is bolted, bolted firmly to one of the legs of the windmill. The next time you're at a windmill and you take a look up and you see that round thing hanging on the leg there and it just looks just like that, that's the regulator. And we're going to spend a few minutes talking about that right now. What it is and and uh, and how what it did for the farmer and, and my efforts to restore it. Okay, we're going to go into the garage now. Let's go into the garage. We'll take a look at uh, the regulators I've been working on. Now this is a regulator that I took off an old windmill. I've had two or three of these. And they're all almost exactly the same, very much identical. It's kind of interesting, actually, since I have the parts list, and the parts list has the description of each part. There's not that many parts. And it has a part number, and that part number is actually on the part. Every part has a number cast right into it. Uh, and and uh, let's see if I can see one here. E34, E46, and so on. So, so that I can... Yeah, there's one right there. So I can actually... Uh, take take these apart and line all the parts up, and I can see the uh, how they line up. And I found it interesting because one regulator, part E34, is different from another regulator, part E34. They're slightly, just slightly. They appear to be they do the same function and they mount the same and so on, but they're a little bit different shape and size and so on. But anyway, that's that's immaterial at this point. So here's an old regulator that I took off a windmill a little while ago. And uh, it, it, this is exactly the way it was when I took it off. You can see it's rusty as the devil. And, and not only is it rusty, but it's, it's frozen, solid. It's, it's, this is not moving. There's nothing moving on this. There's a piece of chain on there, which I wound up. But other than that, nothing's moving. Now, the way this works is that this big wheel spins on this shaft. The whole thing mounts with this bracket on the leg. 
And that shaft goes through, and this big wheel <clears throat> spins on that shaft. Well, this wheel is not spinning right now, trust me. It's held on by this bushing. That bushing is locked in place with a with a screw. It goes in through here, holds it in place. But you can see at the moment, anyway, that the rod itself, the shaft, is rusty as the devil. You can see that the bushing, <clears throat> this, this bushing here that holds the wheel in place, it's all rusty and rusted right on there. And it's rather academic because the wheel's rusty and frozen on there as well. And then there's all different types of parts in here. There's this big part which is supposed to move. And here's one part, you see, that is moving. And it's joined by this part over here, which is moving. So it's not completely jammed up, but uh, it, it, it pretty much. And and most of them are that way. When the ones I've taken off of wooden are, are look just like this when I get them. So the first thing that you have to do uh, what I have to do when I get the regulator off the windmill, uh, which is very easy, it's only held on with two bolts. The first thing you have to do is try to get it apart, get all the different parts taken apart. Now, that is a, is a bit of an issue because you can't just go banging with a hammer. Many of these parts are cast iron, as old cast iron. If you bang on this on the wheel, something a little bit the wrong direction or a little bit too hard, it shatters. And, and then you have a problem because it's very difficult, not impossible, but difficult to weld cast iron, and, and now you've lost an original part. So it takes a lot of work. Uh, there's a great deal of uh, WD-40 or uh, um, uh, liquid wrench, you know, a loosener, and heat as well. So I mount this into the into the vise, and then I, over a couple of days, I spray it, that work in, and, and then I get the... Uh, the uh, uh, the torch, my, my oxyacetylene torch, heat these parts up quickly and try to work them back and forth. It just takes time. And then eventually you get all the parts taken apart. Now I have a picture. Uh, Kevin has several pictures here, actually, uh, of the various parts all taken apart. And you can see uh, just quite a few parts, uh, maybe uh, six or seven different parts to this device. So after you've got that all done, and then you got to clean it all, get all that rust off of there. And what I use is uh, just rust remover you can buy. There's all different types of rust removers. This is a good one that we use here. Uh, it r removes rust and oxide and scale from all metals. It's a phosphate product called uh, rust remover, really original. Uh, <laughs> it does a good job. You should be very careful with it. It has phosphoric acid, which can be a little bit deadly. You put that into a pan set these things into it and uh, and let it soak for a while and eventually what happens is the rust disappears now it won't of course restore any metal that has been corroded and eaten away by the rust but this actually isn't too bad so eventually then once you get all the rust off then i, I spend another half a day with a wire brush in a uh, in a drill and uh, or, or a sanding uh, brush in a drill and I get all these parts nice and smooth and looking nice. I don't take it down to the bare metal. Uh, there's not much point. It'd be a lot of work and almost impossible with all these little teeth. Now you see how this, this big wheel here has, a, has a, a notched tooth. It's almost like a clock in there. You see that? Get all that, clean it down to bare metal would take years. That's not interesting. Get a nice little thing. So then what I do is I get some paint, some good quality paint, and uh, I make it look like this. And I think that this is probably pretty close to what these darn things looked like when they were new. Okay, so on the back there's a, a bracket here uh, with the bolts, a bolt to the leg, hold it up on the leg, and then uh, the wheel now spins. You can see the wheel spins, and, and you can see the parts the back here, how, how this goes around, how it clicks. Now the, if you look right closely in here, I can show you right there. You see that spot right there? Can you zoom in there? You see how, how this thing is like a cog on, on a watch. I mentioned the watch earlier. It's like a cog on a watch. See? As it goes around, it catches in the tooth. And then this device, which has a weight on it right here and, and two points to connect, it goes back and forth, clicks back and forth like this. This, uh, this arm... When the cog is up like that, moves up and down. It's a little spring in there, so it's spring loaded, and on and on it goes. It's it's a really interesting device, and I, I'm going to be honest with you, I have no idea how it works. I literally don't know how it works. I just to say, I've seen it work, and I know what it does. But for me to explain what that does and this does and how that works and this lifts, be very very difficult for me to do that. 
uh, I, I sort of half understand it. And, and, I, and that, now what I do have is a friend uh, not too far from here uh, who is a, a collector of windmills. I'm not a collector. I just have one and love playing with it. But he has a whole bunch of windmills. I don't know how many, 15 to 20 windmills that he works on all the time and, and restores them and so on. It's pretty neat. And he has one of these and he has it almost working. So he sent me a video of his almost working. And I've got that video for you to watch. But when you look at that video, it's pretty interesting because what, what, what you see is this arm going up and down and the wheel slowly turning. The whole thing is, is connected to the windmill, the pull rod on the windmill. It's also connected to uh, a big weight, a heavy weight, maybe as much as seven or eight pound weight that hangs on one of these arms. I'm not sure which one yet. And that weight just hangs down and provides weight for the ratchet. And then there's another uh, another uh, wire that goes down to the trough, to the cattle trough. And in the cattle trough, there's a float with a weight on it as well. And on, on it goes. There's about four different connections, a chain and a cable and a couple of wires. And they all connect to this device and it hangs on the side of the windmill. Now you may be starting to guess what it is. This is a very simple mechanical, I don't know if it's simple or not, a mechanical device to start and stop the windmill when the water in the trough gets low. Exactly. So I've already talked in some of my prior videos about the windmill, how when, when the wind blows it spins and how it pumps water. When the wind doesn't blow it, you can hook up the pump jack or you can hook up, you can hand pump it as well. There's various things about it. But now we have this device, which was developed by the same people, yeah, the same people who, who make the windmill, and this device attaches to the windmill, and when the water in the cattle trough gets low, it pulls the cable on the windmill, and the windmill starts to spin and pumps water. When the water in the trough comes up to the level it should be for the cattle, it shuts off the windmill. Now, that's pretty slick, you got to admit. And, uh, and uh, I'm going to, hopefully, very soon, have uh, the one on my windmill working perfectly, all hooked up, so it'll start and stop the windmill. I don't have cattle, but it'll just be neat to have it going. Next time you see a, an old windmill out in the field, uh, you, can be a, you can be a little bit of a show-off, and you can talk to your family and, and say, yes, you see that thing there? See, that's a regulator. It starts and stops the windmill, and then you can show off a little bit. Now you know what it is. <laughs> and I think you'll get a kick. When you see this little video, I had the same problem. Watching a little video just shows this. It doesn't show all the wires and the cables. So it's difficult to tell what it's actually doing. But you can see it clicking along and doing its job. And it's pretty neat. Anyway, there you go, folks. Another little bit of information about my BD Pumper windmill and how I'm getting very, very close to making this windmill uh, uh, exactly the way it was 100 years ago when it was first built by adding the regulator so the windmill starts and stops automatically. I hope you enjoyed that and watch the video. I think you'll find it pretty interesting. Okay, we'll talk to you soon. Alec Pierce at the ranch with my windmill. Bye-bye.